Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come in the room. Come in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Come in the room. The Lord is great. The Lord is powerful. He is mighty. Good morning to all of you. He is the King that we serve, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Come on in the room. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, it is time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. Time for us to magnify him for he is great. Time for us to give him the first fruit of our praise and the first fruit of our lips. Yes, we adore him because he is our God. He is our healer. He's our protector. He is our provider. It is time for us to adore and magnify the Lord for he has done such great and marvelous and powerful things for all of us. Yes, he's raised us. He has healed us. He has led us to know how powerful and great he is. Yes, he continues to shield us from the hand of the enemy. And even that, we give his name praise we magnify him in all things that we do. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Yes, come in the room. Glory to God. He is powerful. He is mighty. Yes, he is awesome. Good morning. Come on in the room. Good morning to you, Sister Sherilyn. Glory to God. Good morning to you, Sister Nika. Glory to God. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Yes, and then we're going to go get right into what the Lord has for us this morning. Father, we just bless your name. We praise you, God, for who you are. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are mighty and powerful in our lives, oh Lord God. There is nothing that is too hard for you, God. And we thank you, God, that you continue to bless us and heal us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we uh, you continue to shield us, God, from the hand of the enemy, Lord God. Thank you for making a way in our lives, oh Lord God. And, and Lord God, when the enemy told us that he was going to have us and he was going to sift us, oh Lord God. Yes, you told us, God, to stand still and allow you, God, to, just to fight our battles, God. We thank you, Lord God, for moving death out of our way, for moving frustration out of our way, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for moving, God, the hand of the enemy out of our way, God, that we would be able to walk this path and walk this passage, oh God. Yes, a straight passage that you have for us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for continuing to bless us, bless our hands with what the, you have uh, called our hands to do, God, this morning and this, this evening, God, and just, God, for our lives, oh Lord God, for our life's sake, God. We thank you, God, for never leaving us, for never forsaking us, oh God. We thank Thank you, Lord God, that uh, everything that you allowed our hands to do, God, it has been well, Lord God, it has been done very well according to your word. And Lord, we don't boast in ourselves, but we boast in you, oh, the Holy Spirit, who gives us the ability, oh God, to do all things and do all things well according to your word, God, and according to your way. So thank you, Lord God, for just blessing us. Thank you for healing us. And most of all, we thank you for this word, Lord God, this word that we know is going to go forth with power. We know it's going to go forth with might, oh Lord God, and even Lord God, that we, there may be things in our life, oh Lord God, but we thank you for every breakthrough, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that the the the, the faith of God will come to uh, rebuke any sickness and disease in our bodies, oh Lord God. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your delivering power, Lord God. We thank you for the Spirit, God, of deliverance right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. And oh God, we thank you, my God, that even right now, God, that you are sending more, my God, a releasing Spirit to release us, God, from anything that would hold us bound. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, that you give us the ability to bind and to loose, Lord God. And we have the ability, God, to resist everything in our lives that is trying to bring us down and hold us back, Lord God. So thank you, God, for this word. Yes, that is bringing a life to our bodies right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and we bless you, O oh God. Amen. And bless the Lord. Amen, people of God. Yes. Uh, good morning to all of you that have joined this morning. Meditation, Sister Linda, good morning to you. God bless you. Brother Scotty, good morning to you. Sister Phyllis, good Good morning, Sister Terry. Good morning to you. God bless you, Sister Barbara. Yes, good morning to you, Sister Mary. Good morning to you. God bless you, and Sister Mary again. Good morning to all of you that are joining this morning meditation. I see you, Sister Rosemary. Good morning to you, Cousin Jean. Good morning to all of you that are joining. Good morning, good morning to you. Listen, this is a great day. Sister Sherry, so good to see you this morning. It's a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God. A great day, yes, to bless the Lord. It's a great day to give him some praise. It is a great day, my God, to tell the Lord how much you love and appreciate him. Listen, we are in this, this series, yes, of shifting this series. Good morning to you, Sister Deborah. Uh, this series, Sister Cynthia, good morning to you. God bless you. Yes, God, good morning to you, Sister Marilyn. 
We are in this series of um, this paradigm shift, this new shift, this new way of life that we're going to be living in. This new way of life that we're living is a new way that we're not going to go back to the old. Yeah, today we are setting the stage for a new you, a new us. We are setting a stage so that our surroundings have to be different. And I believe that the Lord was speaking and talking about setting a stage so that we can do something different. Not so that we would be actors, no, no, so that we can live a life that is is different. Um, I heard the Lord speaking to me this morning and he said that we have to learn how to thrive in a foreign land. And what are you saying? He's saying as you change your surroundings, as you change your atmosphere, you've got to learn how to thrive in a place that's different from what you're used to being. Yes, your surroundings have to be different. Sister Nimi, things have to be different around you. I know that we are used to the same people. We're used to living in the same place, the same address. We're used to the same uh, things happening, the same experiences that are happening. But the Spirit of the Lord spoke this morning to me and he said, we have to learn how to get used to something different. We got to learn how to get used to different environments and, and different behaviors. We've got to learn how to thrive around people who are different from us. Yeah, we are, sometimes we are used to surviving in environments of chaos and we're used to surviving. Good morning to you, Dr. Karen. We're used to surviving in, in environments. I see Sister Nimby, yeah, in uh, uh, environments of drama. And we're used to surviving in a drama and environments where we have pain. And sometimes people, you thrive on pain and you thrive on drama and my God, you thrive. Come on in here, somebody. You you thrive. Some people, some people say, I thrive under pressure. I thrive when I'm pressed and I'm thriving. My God, when things are, my back is up against the wall and, and the Lord is speaking to us. He's saying, why are you going to thrive in places like that? He said, I came to give you abundant life. He said, I didn't come to kill and steal from you. I didn't come to put you in pressured situations. He said, no, I want you to be able to work under pressure, but he said, I didn't come to to make you thrive under pressure. He said, I want you to be at your best. And being at your best is a place where you can think and where you, my God, can move and where you can breathe. And yeah, you being at your best is where you can sit down and be, have your reasoning of your right mind. That's where you being at your best. Listen, oh, I heard the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me this morning. He said, you've got to remove some furniture, glory to God, in, in the stage that you are in and, and set the stage for different scenes in your life. Come on, different scenes scenes in your life. Come on in here, somebody that are going to ch challenge you to thrive in a different environment in order for you to truly, truly shift from the place that you were to the place where the Lord needs for you to be in order that you can walk out the plan that he has for your life. You've got to be willing to remove some of that old furniture. How many of you, glory to God, you, you wanted to remodel your home or you wanted to do something different in your house? Glory to God. But it was that say, that chair. Look, look, I call it my sleeping chair. It's that one chair you just didn't want to remove. It's that chair that was the most comfortable for you. I, I know I'm not the only one. It's that one chair that was so comfortable you broke it in and you've had it for years and you said I can I can change everything else around it. I can get a new sofa I can get a new coffee table I can get some new lamps I can even get glory to God some new rugs I, yeah but but that that chair that chair that's the most comfortable I don't want to get rid of that chair is that anybody else glory to God is that anybody else but me my God that that one I don't want to leave but the Lord is speaking and he's saying to us, you've got to learn, my God, how to get rid of that one chair. Because that one chair, people of God, is the hindrance. I talked about it yesterday. What is that one thing, my God, that is hindering you from moving? What one thing that's hindering you, keeping you, people of God, from changing? What is that one thing that is undermining your commitment to change? And sometimes, people of God, is that one chair on the stage of life that you have that you just won't get rid of. Because for you, that thing has been so comfortable. So instead of having that rug, my God, of, of frustration, that rug of confusion, why don't you bring in the carpet of calmness? Come on here, somebody. Get rid of that rug you love so well. I know it has the right colors, but if you change your furniture, if you set the stage, glory to God for a new you. Come on, you better share this word with somebody. If you're setting the stage for a new you, come on, you've got to remove the old furniture that was on the old stage. 
stage because you can no longer work in that old stage. Oh, I hear the spirit of the Lord speaking. My God, you can't put new wine in old wine skins, people of God, because the old wine skins are going to break. Well, they're going to tear. Come on. It's not going to be good for anything. Not the old wine skins, nor the new wine. Listen, you've been sitting in that chair of bitterness far too long. You thought it was a chair of comfort, but that was the chair that the enemy was using against you. And he's using it against you yet to this day because you don't want to throw it away. Throw out the chair, my God, of bitterness. Throw out the chair, my God, of anger. Throw out that chair of envy. Throw out that chair, my God, of, of malcontent. Throw out that chair, my God, and bring in the sofa. Bring in that sofa, my God, of peace. And bring in that sofa of love. Come on in here, somebody. Bring in that sofa, my God, where you have understanding. You got to bring it in. I'm talking about setting the stage for a new you. Because what we don't recognize is that God can change. Come on, some impossible things happening in our life. But we've got to allow that change to take place. I'm talking about a paradigm shift, people of God. I'm talking about shifting in your behaviors and shifting in your thinking and shifting my God in some of the situations that have happened in your life because sometimes we, we face and sing things are, are, are impossible. We think are impossible to us. My God, yes. And, and then we ask God, we ask God for things that, that we don't think they're, they're going to happen. Listen, we don't have the faith to believe it. And sometimes it's because our stage has been set for the old thing. Come on. It's been set for the old thing. And, and sometimes maybe we feel trapped about a situation, but it's because, again, our stage has not been changed. The, the way that we need to move and function, it still looks the same to us, Rose. We want to change our mindset, but our experiences, our, our environment still looks the same same. And my God, our, it, it still seems the same to us. And so therefore we're on this emotional roller coaster. We're on this wheel that, that seems like things are not going to change for the better. But if we can just allow our platform, allow the stage to change, allow God to take, take what it is that we have and do his best work. I'm talking about work, the work that he has with our faith. The Bible says that with man, it's impossible my God, but with God, all things, glory to God, are possible. And so if we can just think about, listen, rearrange, come on somebody, rearranging what is happening in our life, rearranging the platform that we're walking on, rearranging the stage, removing some of that old furniture, getting rid of it, bringing in some of the new, come on, and we can be free. The Bible says, my God, in uh, John 8, 36, if the sun sets, who the sun sets free, you are free, you're free indeed. I'm talking about being free indeed, not, not you're free for a moment and then you go back to being in bondage. You got to understand what freedom means. Freedom means you are liberated. Freedom, listen, there's a song where it says you're free to dance and you're free to sing. My God, you're free to give God the praise. Oh my God, you're free to worship God. Why are you free to do that? You're free to do that because there's nothing holding you back anymore. There's no hindrances, no hindrances in your mind, no hindrances hindrances in, in what you can see, no hindrances in your perception. Christ has freed you. My God, what are the things that Christ has freed you from, people of God? Oh, glory to God. Listen, the new you. Hey, I see you. Oh, I see you, Sister Natalie. Oh, yeah, cousin. Yes, if I was in church, I would tell you, tell somebody. It's just say free. You're free. What are you free from? The new you. The new you has been freed from the bondage of sin. Oh, you have been freed, my God, people of God. What is bondage? What the bondage is that you have been in captivity. The enemy has, 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 has made us prisoners to the bondage of sin. As a matter of fact, it wasn't your fault, people of God. Yeah, yeah don't blame yourself for it. You, you were born into sin. It's just how things happen. You were born into sin. I was, you was. We all were. We were slaves to sin. Listen, you didn't have any power to overcome it. 
Oh, yes, yeah, sin was ruling in your life, my God. But but I'm just so glad, my God, that God saw fit. Hey, he saw fit to save us. And he said, I want to I want to bring something new in your life. As a matter of fact, he said, I want to bring the spirit of God in you because the Holy Spirit is going to be in you. The Holy Spirit, my God, is going to allow you to be free. Freedom, my God, is what's going to happen. You're free from the bondages of sin because Jesus Christ came to deliver you from the bondages of sin. So you've got to set that standard. Stage, my that sage stage is set for you because you didn't have to do it. Glory to God, He set the stage for you at Calvary. He said, Listen, there was no more sin. I saw you walking in sin. I saw you, my God, walking on that stage of sin and bondage. He said, I saw you where the stage was set. I saw the prison bars, and my God, I saw the shackles. He said, But no longer are you walking around with the shackles, and my God, the jail. Oh, oh come on in here, somebody. No longer are you walking with the jail clothes on. On. No longer do you have the shackles on your feet and on your hands. He said, because I came to give you life. I came to set you free. Glory to God. The stage has been set, people of God, that you can shift into this new mindset that God has for you. You got to recognize that you're no longer in bondage. And although, my God, maybe you had thought before that, yeah, the penalty, you had the, uh, the sin on you and Satan had control. Listen, you got to recognize that the Spirit of the Lord came and the Spirit of the Lord came and and gave you freedom. Glory to God. The Spirit of God came and lifted you. The Spirit of the Lord came. Listen, he said, I came to give you freedom. I came to lift you up. He said, if any man like God, God is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things, glory to God, have passed away. Listen, you have been freed, not only from the bondage of sin, but you have been freed from the penalty of death. Because Bible says in Romans 16, 23, that the wages of sin, oh, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, the wages Ages of sin, hey my God, is death. But I'm telling you, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. My God, I want you to know this morning that outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm talking about setting the stage, people of God, for a new you, new understanding in God, because the enemy would have you to believe that you are still walking in bondage. The enemy would have you to believe that you are still under the penalty of death. But let me let me tell you this, people of God. Yeah, outside of Christ. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You have a death sentence outside of him. But let me set the stage right now. Let me set the stage, my God, for the enemy to let you know that when you are on the, when you are in God, you are on the path, listen, to be eternally separated from, from, uh, from, from the, the enemy. When you are in God, you are eternally separated from the enemy. And when, Melissa, but when you are not in Christ, you are separated from God. Let's, I got to tell you this morning. He says, the wages of sin is death. When you walk in that path, my God, when you're the old man, walk in that path. When, that, when your stage is set for death, your sage stage is set for bondage. Yeah, you're going to walk that path. But Paul is saying to us this morning in Romans 6 and 23 that, that when you give God your life, when you have made up your mind that you're going to shift your mindset, when your principles are going to change, and you know they're going to change forever. Because I said to you, when the Red Sea parted and when the Lord bring, brought the waters back together, you couldn't go back that same way, people of God. When the door locks, you don't have the key. You can't unlock it and go back the other way. When, my God, when you decide in your mind that you're really going to make a shift and you're really going to start walking the way that God has for you to walk, people of God, you got to decide you can't go back and you can't go the other way. My God, Paul is saying to you that listen, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And when he sets you free, my God, he took away that death sentence. I'm setting the stage for you, people of God that you can walk in the newness of life, that you don't have to be feeling that fear of guilt and condemnation. My God, yeah, yeah, we, we had a death sentence. We had, yeah, we had a guilty mark on our life, people of God. But this morning, I want you to understand, listen, that stage, listen, that environment has changed for you because when the Lord came and did what he did at Calvary, that death sentence, that penalty that we deserve, people of God, that has been removed from our life. And now we have eternal life. Listen, there has been a shift. My, uh, not my date of all CK. They, there has been a shift, people of God, in the eternal destination that you have. Yeah, we were headed to hell. My God. 
God. We're, before Christ, we were headed to hell. Before you gave your life to the Lord, you were headed straight to hell, my God. But when you gave your life to the Lord, when you decided, my God, that you were going to make Jesus your king, and when you were going to make him Lord of Lords, and my God, when you decided you were going to rejoice in him, and when you decided that there was a shift, people of God, there was a shift in your, your eternal destination. And now, my God, you can say, I have a new life. I have a new attitude. I have some new paradigms. I've got some new principles that I'm walking in. Listen, I've got, listen, I've got a new environment. I've got a new stage for the story that I'm going to tell for the rest of my life. I can rejoice, my God, because I'm in Christ. And, and in Christ, my God, I have eternal life. I don't have to walk this penalty of seeing my God out because my God, not, and I'm not separated from God anymore. Glory to God. I'm walking with him. And so therefore, my God, because of that, I don't have any guilt. I don't have any shame, my God. A lot of times, people of God, we walk around with guilt. We walk around with shame because of the things, my God, that we have done. All of us, my God, have done something. As a matter of fact, some of us are probably doing some stuff right now, right to this day. We're doing it, people of God. But listen, let me tell you what happened. Because Jesus died, you always have him, my God, interceding on your behalf. You are always, you always have him, my God. There are things that we've done we wish we could take back. Stuff you're doing right now, you wish you wouldn't do it, my God. But you always have, oh my God. You always have Jesus Christ to go to right now. To say, Lord, forgive me of the things that I'm doing, my God, that you may, my God, continue to have me in your fellowship and the family of God. Because the biggest weapon that Satan can has against us, you know, one of the biggest weapons we know he has is discouragement. Yeah. But another weapon that Satan has against us is continuing to have us looking back on our past, continuing to have us feel guilty and con condemned about the things that we have done. And what does he do when he does that? He robs us of our joy. He robs us of our peace. Come on here, somebody. But let me tell you this morning, I'm setting the stage for you, the setting the stage for you to let you know that you have been set free of all that guilt and shame. Lord says, I didn't come to condemn you. No, I didn't, I didn't come. That, he said, that wasn't my job. My job wasn't to come to condemn the world, but I came to save it. I came to set you free. He said, listen, I, when I forgave you, listen, this, this, this is Jesus talking. He said, when I came to forgive you, I came to remove the sin from, from you. He said, your sin is as far from the east as the west. He said, I don't remember it anymore. I said, I threw it into the lake. I said, I'm not going to bring it up again. Glory to God. So when, when Christ forgives you of the sins that you've done, all that's in the past. He frees you, my God, from the shame. He frees, frees you from the guilt. My God, if you are forgiven, you are forgiven. My God, don't carry that burden. Don't carry that condemnation. Don't be worried about what people saying about what you have done. Listen, let them worry about what they're saying, about what they have done. Don't you worry about it because Christ is not talking about it. The enemy is talking about it. When you understand the things that God and Jesus has set you free from, you know it will set the stage for you to live in what Christ has freed you to. Glory to God. The Bible says that if he set you free, if the son has set you free, you are free indeed. What is he? Oh my God. What is he freed you to, my God? He has freed you, my God, to live a life. And not only has he freed you to live a life, he's freed you, my God, to live an abundant life. Glory to God. Listen, we are setting the stage to, in, oh my God, Jabez talked about it. He said, our Lord, in, enlarge my territories. He has freed you too. He's, he's freed you from bondage. He's freed you from condemnation. He's freed you from the penalty and death of sin. But what has he freed me too, Pastor Tina? He's freed you to live an abundant life. My God, he's freed you, my God, so you can live, my God, to the fullest Fullest of joy, fullest, my God, full to your capacity, my God. Not only that, He said He's freed you, my God, so that you could enlarge your territories. He's freed you, my God, so that you can enjoy an intimate relationship with Him. Not only with Him, with those that you would come in contact with, my God. He's freed you, my God, so that you could do what God has called for you to do. He's freed you, my God, that you could build a relationship with Him, my God. He's freed you, my God, that you can have a confidence to go to Him, my God. The Bible says in First. John 5, 14 and 15, that you can ask him anything according to his will and he will hear you. And when he hears you, my God, you will have the potential.
petitions that he has set before you. He has freed you, my God, that you can do what it is that he's called for you to do. He's freed you, my God, to put your hands up, my God, to the plow and work the work that he's called for you to do. The Bible says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. People of God, we're setting the stage, my God. He's freed you, my God, that you can, all the burdens that you have, that you can cast those cares upon him. Why is that? Because he cares for you. He's freed you, my God. You don't got to run around, glory to God, with a guilty conscience by God, but you can allow God to take care of every situation that's going on in your life. He's freed you, my God, that you can know that everything that he has started in you, glory to God, he's going to finish it. He freed you, my God, so you can know that he's got some accomplishing power inside of you. You've got confidence, people of God. He's setting the stage, my God, to let you know and understand. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fear, my God. He's setting the stage to let you know that you can walk in freedom and you can walk in victory. Glory to God. He's setting the stage, my God, for you to stand firm in God and know the glory to God, that God has got your back. He's setting the stage, glory to God, to let you know, as the Bible says in Revelation, that he has made all things, glory to God, new. And this is the promise, glory to God, that he's given to all of you. Listen, that if any man is in Christ, if anybody is in Christ, my God, he's a new creature. He said old things are passed away. Behold, new things have come. Oh, that's found in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. You know, we talk about it as a metamorphosis effect. But I'm telling you, this thing really happens. If you can hold on to the fact that it's time for you to make a shift, time for you to make a change, glory to God. If you can recognize the fact that there are some things that are undermining your ability, your commitment to change. And if you can say, today I'm going to set the stage for the new me. Today I'm going to change. I'm going to remove some of that old furniture. I'm going to remove those uh, creature comforts that I have. I'm going to remove those things because I need the new me to come out. I need the new me to get ready. Listen, I'm getting ready to put my, my modeling clothes on. I need to have a better relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I know at one point, my God, I was separated from God. Listen, we were all separated from him. We recognize that. But the thing I got to recognize and realize is that, listen, I, without God, there is no hope. And my God, without hope, hope there is no God. I got to recognize, I got to recommit my life to him and walk in that new relationship that he wants. Oh, he wants a relationship with you, people of God. Yeah, he wants a relationship with you. He wants you to know, my God, that you are a part of his. I believe the Lord is talking to us today when he's saying, I want you to commit your life to me, glory to God, so that you can walk with me and be with me in glory. He says, that I'm going to, he says, I'm going to work it out with you down here on earth. Yeah, I'm going to give you the thing my God, that you need. You're going to ask me for something that you're not going to ever have to worry about. He said, but what I want ultimately, Yolanda, to happen is that you be in paradise with me. Glory to God. He says, I already prepared a mansion for you. He said, if it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. Glory to God. I have done that. He said, but what I ultimately want to happen is that my God, this new relationship that we have together. He said, I want us to walk it out together. I want us to talk it out together. He said, I want to give you all the things, my God, that I promised you to give to you. My God, I want you to, my God, be, be very focused on this thing as you shift into this new direction, as you shift into this new life. He said, Pastor Tina, I'm already serving God. He says, no, I want you to shift into this new direction because there are some things, my God, that are missing and some things that are lacking. He said, but when you come to me, he said, I want to give you a new purpose that not only that you live, my God, not that you're living for yourself, but that you're living for me, glory to God. Living for me. He said, I want to give you new purpose and I want to give you new power. God, glory to God. I talked about the Holy Spirit living within you because the Holy Spirit can live within you. My God, and give you the power. Glory to God that you need the power. Glory to God to tread on surface. That's power to speak to what the enemy is doing in your life. My God, and that thing can change. Does somebody need some changing power? My God, that you can transform your situation. Well, when I started
started this meditation, I talked about your environment changing. I talked about my God thriving in a foreign land, thriving in a place that you don't know. The Lord is taking you to a new destination, taking you to a place, my God, that you have not seen before. I know it's been good for you, but Sister Phyllis, the Lord wants to take you somewhere that you've never seen before. He wants to, my God, show you something that you've never seen. He wants to do something in your life that you've never done. Glory to God. Listen, we were headed to hell. Oh yeah, we were headed there and the enemy, he didn't care if, he, if we knew how to get there or not. He was going to show us and to grab us by the hand and pull us there. But the Lord, my God, is speaking to us right now. He said, you got to shift, shift my God in your principles and shift in your attitudes and shift in your behaviors. He said, you got to shift in your very thoughts. He says, you got to get down in your spirit, my God. He says, because right now in the midst of all that is going on, he says, I want to take you on a new journey. I want to take you on a ride. He says, I'm setting the stage, my God, for a new you. I think about my God, listen, sometimes in church and maybe you, you all think about it in your churches and, and my God, how your churches become more effective. And, and my God, if, if, you, if you go to church and my God, you don't have a microphone and you don't have maybe a musician and maybe you go to church and maybe there's not a platform. Maybe there's not a pulpit. The church, my God, is not ready to deliver the word. And if the church is not ready to deliver the word, the people of God won't receive and they won't be blessed and they won't, my God, be healed and they won't leave from that place with what it is that God has for them. Yes, certainly a person can just stand and, and maybe there isn't even a platform. Glory to God. Listen, you just come on on some rocks and sticks and you just talking or speaking a word. But listen, sometimes a stage has to be set in order for ministry to go forth more effectively and more efficiently. And just like with us, people of God, we've got to set the stage in our life. Glory to God. Glory to God, that God can use us in a mighty way. We got to set the stage where we can be more effective. We got to set the stage, my God, where we can be more efficient. We can set the stage where we can be more productive in the things of God. And how do we set the stage, people of God? That's what you got to understand. How do we set the stage for us to live? And how do we set the stage for us to function? How do we set the stage, my God, for God to do what it is that he needs to do in our lives? You got to think about that, people of God. What is in the environment that you are working? in right now that is not conducive to the move of God in your life. I'm talking about setting the stage. I'm talking about my God moving around and working, my God, and being able, my God, to have the things that will make it necessary. And my God, and needed for you to deliver a word, needed and necessary for you to live, needed and necessary for you to hear a word of God, needed and necessary for you to speak a word, needed and necessary for you, my God, to root out everything the enemy is trying to, to say and speak in your life. Root out every stronghold and what is needed and necessary for you in your environment, my God, what needs to be taken off of your stage and what needs to be put on people of God. And we'll listen, tomorrow we're going to walk the runway because my God, we've got to set the stage for God to do something mighty powerful in your lives. Glory to God. But you got to be ready and willing, my God. You got to be willing to get rid of that comfortable chair. My God, you know the chair got holes in it. My God, the leather, my God, is coming apart. Glory to God. Listen, you know my God, it doesn't match the current firm that's in your house. You got to get rid of the stuff, my God, that is making it my heart for God to use. Oh, glory to God. I say God to use you. God wants to use you in a mighty way. You got to get out of your own way. People of God, if you want to shift, if you want this paradigm shift in your life, glory to God. If you want to move and walk in the way that God has for you, if you want to receive the blessings, the, the promises, my God, if you want to receive, my God, the health, the wealth, if you want to receive all that God has for you, the prosperity, and I'm just talking about moving forward in him. If you want to receive that, come on, you got to allow God to set the stage. Allow God to move what he wants to move. Allow God to rearrange what he wants to rearrange. Glory to God. Allow God to do it how he wants to do it. Glory to God. So that you can make safe passage. I said safe passage. Glory to God. The enemy is coming. He's, he's trying. He's picking at you. He's nitpicking. Glory to God. But you got to allow, the Lord will allow safe passage to you. Yay. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why will I not fear any evil? Because the Lord has set me free. He set me free, glory to God. Set me free from some things and he set me free to some things. And I'm going to walk that thing out. Father God, I bless your name. I praise you, God, for who you are. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this revelation that you've given to us on today. To help us to understand, Lord God, that as we set the stage for this new you, Lord God, there are some things, Lord God, that we've got to get rid of. Lord, there are some 
some things, Lord God, that we've got to rearrange in our lives, Lord God. If we are serious, Lord God, about this paradigm shift, if we are serious about God receiving the blessings that you have for us, if we are serious about walking in the abundant life that you have called for us to walk in, Lord, if we are serious, Lord God, about moving the things of the enemy out of our way, if we are serious, oh my God, Lord, if we are serious, Lord God, about teaching others how powerful, Lord, and recognizing how powerful you are in our lives, Lord God, we recognize we've got to set the stage, set the stage, my God, that we can live better and set the stage, my God, we can walk better and set the stage where we can work better, oh God. Set the stage where we be more efficient and effective Christians in the body of Christ, Lord God, that people, my God, will not look at us, God, but look at the God that is in us. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, my God, in the lives of your people. Thank you for how you're healing us, God, and setting us free in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We bless you, God, for this word on today, and we thank you, Lord God, that you are healing us right now in the main, mighty name of Jesus. So I speak to those, my God, that are sick. I thank you, Lord God, yes, that everything that has tried to come against them, oh God, the Lord God, we come against that right now. Every negative thing, my God, that's coming against Sister Angela, everything that is clotting in her bloodstream, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are evacuating that right now. You are, God, dissolving the blood clots right now within her system. We thank you, Lord God, that every manner of sickness and disease is got to go in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, yes, that we can cut ourselves out from those recurring sicknesses, oh God. Those people, oh God, that are, are calling on your name, deliver them right now from every manner of sickness and disease in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, we thank you for Brother Jim right now. We thank you, oh Lord God, that yes, Lord God, that you are erasing, God, everything from him, oh God, every uh, 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 instance in his mind, oh God, that would cause him to think that you will not heal him. We thank you, Lord God, for the shift, God, you've given to him that let him know, God, that he needs to speak life. We breathe life right now. We reject, God, every spirit of death, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus because, Lord God, you have shifted us. You moved us from death unto life and, Lord God, we receive life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. Yes, my, even for Brother Armando, continue, my God, to give him comfort, Lord God. Continue, God, to give him strength and continue to give him peace. Not only him, God, but the bereaved all over the land and country. Continue, my God, to release your word into their lives, oh God, that their spirits may be quickened, God, that they may be healed, God, and that they may be delivered and set free. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and bless the Lord. Amen, people of God. Listen, it is time for us to have a new paradigm shift, shifting to the things of God, that we all will receive what God has for us in this day and in this season, my God, of our lives. I love you all so much with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. You go in peace.